Clearwater Marine Aquarium touts itself as being a non-profit rescue rehab release facility. In fact, this used to be the sign showing their mission. But today, that sign has been replaced by a more modern one that noticeably does not display the words Rescue Rehab Release. Now, the aquarium houses the Hollywood phenom Witter with two movies under her belt. So the question remains, behind all the glitz and glamour and an apparently dwindling rehab release program, what is the real truth for life as a dolphin in captivity? Richard O'Berry captured and trained dolphins for the 1960s hit TV show Flipper. Soon after Kathy died, which was one of the Flipper dolphins, Mr. O'Berry, upon realizing these were highly intelligent animals, made a radical transition from capturing and training dolphins to actively protesting the captivity industry for more than 40 years. He is a marine mammal specialist for Earth Island Institute and director of the Dolphin Project. He has rescued and released over 25 captive dolphins throughout the world. They are just doing shows and changing the language, bastardizing the definition of education, research, and conservation. That's what these places do now. This is the new flavor of the month. They change the language. They don't call it a show. They call it an educational experience. And that's what Clearwater Aquarium is doing. I don't go by what they call these things. They are what I see they are. For example, I was just in uh, Greece where they do the same thing. And it's really a dolphin show couched in as some kind of an educational center. And it's all about selling tickets and, and uh, getting people to sit in the seat. If they were real, if Clearwater was real, first of all, they would have built it in the sea where you have the natural rhythms of the tide, the current, the sounds of the sea. Dolphins that are going to be rehabilitated need to be taken out of an artificial concrete box and uh, put into a natural sea pen. Dr. Madalena Barazzi is the co-founder of the Ocean Conservation Society and holds a PhD in biology. She has written two books and over 350 articles on science and nature covered by CNN, CBS, NBC, Hallmark Channel, Los Angeles Times, New Scientist, American Scientist, and the National Geographic News Watch. Her latest book, Dolphin Confidential, Confessions of a Field Biologist, reveals what it is truly like to do field research as a scientist studying these magnificent animals for over 20 years. I think the problem with captivity is more uh, like what these animals are about and the space that they need to survive, not specific uh, behavior that they display. They need uh, uh, to roam free in the ocean. A tank can never be enough uh, uh, to support the need uh, of this animal, not because of their brain, not because of their uh, social complex life, and not because of their need uh, of uh, ranging uh, widely in uh, in the ocean. Bottlenose dolphins here in my study area, for instance, range from Baja California up to almost to the Oregon coast. So they range for hundreds and hundreds of miles and they move up and down the coast. So these are no animal than, uh, again, you can put uh, in a tank and they just go in circle. And when uh, they move over this uh, wide uh, area, they interact with other individuals, they cooperate uh, the, for feeding, uh, they raise their young. So you take away everything from this animal while you put them in captivity. Dr. Naomi Rose was the go-to marine mammal scientist for the Humane Society of the United States and senior scientist at the Humane Society Society International for over 20 years. She is globally known and has testified in front of Congress as well as possessing an extensive policy background on marine mammals. She presently holds the position of marine mammal scientist at the world-renowned Animal Welfare Institute. The facility may be an appropriate rescue rehab facility if the goal is to return these animals to the wild at, you know, unless it's absolutely impossible. For example, winter would be an example of a dolphin that absolutely could not be returned to the wild. I don't know about Nicholas or the other dolphins there. I haven't heard enough about them. I haven't seen them evaluated appropriately to know whether they could be returned to the wild. But the only way Clearwater is an appropriate rescue rehab facility is if that's the goal. If you are going to retain the animals in captivity for the rest of their lives, 
there's nothing appropriate about it. It is absolutely too small, too outdated, too barren. It's just not an appropriate permanent facility for any of them. And again, keeping these animals as singletons, keeping them solitary is always wrong. It's never the right thing for such a social species. On the other hand, if in fact you've got a, a dolphin like Winter, and I'm gonna say something that's incredibly unpopular, but I've seen her, I've watched her. Um, I spent quite a bit of time actually when I was at Clearwater observing her sort of doing what she does a lot of the day. She didn't have her tail on, she doesn't wear it very often at all because it's uncomfortable for her. And I watched what she does instead of swimming around as most of these dolphins do, even in captivity. She was doing repetitive stereotyped behavioral patterns, doing the same thing over and over and over again. She's clearly, uh, her muscle tone is very poor. She has a curved spine. Quite frankly, I think her quality of life is terrible. And whereas she may be an incredible inspiration for people who have um, disabilities and have been, you know, have, are amputees and so on, she may be an incredible inspiration for those people. She is paying a very high price to be that inspiration. Her life is absolutely miserable. Clearwater might respond by saying, you just, you know, you're, you're assuming that because you're assuming she's miserable because you would be miserable. But the fact is you can look at certain things objectively and measure them, and I'm a scientist, so I'm all about the data, and what she was doing was classic, stereotyped, repetitive, neurotic behavior. And her muscle tone speaks for itself. You know, she is alive because she has that fighting spirit, and I, I give her credit for that. She's an animal that is being exploited. She's frankly being exploited. The groundswell of public outcry since a release of documentaries such as Blackfish and the Cove has apparently begun to take its toll on the industry. Amid recent revenue increases for theme parks in Florida, SeaWorld is the only park with declining revenue. Mexico has become the latest country to join the movement against marine mammals in captivity. If the measure goes through, Mexico won't be alone. India became the largest country to recently ban the practice following Costa Rica, Chile, Croatia, Cyprus, Hungary, Slovenia, and Switzerland. Other countries like Greece and Belgium have banned performing animal shows as well. If we read off a list of all the unsuccessful captive facilities separately, it would take up the allotted time for this whole show, simply because of the quantity of failed venues that have either closed or never opened. That's just wrong. That's the wrong way to go. They're, they're making a huge mistake. Not just because of what it means for the dolphins, not, and not just the rescue rehab dolphins they have, but the dolphins they'll have to bring in to support that edutainment. They're gonna have to bring in healthy, captive-born, whatever, wild-caught, whatever dolphins to do that. But aside from that, as far as I can tell, and I've been doing this for 20 plus years, this style of public display of dolphins in edutainment shows is going out of style. Just from a business perspective, and I'm no business person, but you know, I've had to sort of look at it that way for the last couple of years, is it, it's not a good investment. I think people are, through things like Blackfish and Death at SeaWorld and The Cove, are becoming more sophisticated about this and certainly are starting to question whether it's appropriate to still have these animals doing circus-like shows when all other zoos have moved into you know, naturalistic enclosures, and they certainly don't have chimps riding tricycles anymore, and you know, uh, bears dancing and whatever. That's just that would that would be horrific at a zoo. So I think people are starting to realize what's so different about dolphins. Why is it okay for dolphins? No, no, it isn't okay for dolphins. So for some place like Clearwater to suddenly say we're going to invest into this old business model, that's uh, probably really risky business-wise. Dr. Lori Marino is a neuroscientist and expert in animal behavior and intelligence. She has co-authored groundbreaking studies and is internationally known for her work on the evolution of brain and intelligence in dolphins and whales. She is the author of close to 100 papers on marine mammals as well as the founder and executive director of the Camilla Center for Animal Advocacy. If they were going to treat winter humanely, and this goes for the others as well, they would provide a way for them to live a more natural life in a sea pen if they could not, in fact, be released into the wild. In the case of winter, 
uh, she clearly needs some help in, su in surviving, but she does not have to do shows several times a day, many times a week. There's nothing about that that helps her in any way that is completely, that's completely exploitation and they're taking advantage of the fact that she cannot leave. So the shows have nothing to do with helping her, nothing to do with her welfare. Uh, they're just 180 degrees out of phase with what you would do if you really cared about the welfare of winter and the others there. The conclusion, after listening to experts in this field and sifting through an enormous amount of information, including a report from the Humane Society of the United States on marine mammals in captivity, is that there are only an average of one to two dolphins available for rescue per year in Florida. With seven dolphin rescue facilities in that same state, it comes out to less than one dolphin per year. However, rehab facilities present a great public relations and marketing tool to promote their business. The overall effect makes these facilities look good in the public eye while the money continues to roll in. On the other hand, the negative effect for dolphins is that they end up never being released and in concrete tanks as a cute money-making dolphin show or on display. Rescue, rehabilitation and release I don't think are their primary concerns right now. I think marketing and development are their primary concerns. Um, rescue is a nice way to sell it to the public. It makes us look great. Who doesn't want to rescue sea animals? Um, but I don't think that's their primary concern anymore, and that makes me sad. In Clearwater Marine Aquarium's recent release of their new proposed facilities, they have all of this space for the grounds. A food court, movie props, theater, kids' playground, and gift shop. However, this is the space allotted to the dolphins. Does this look like a facility whose primary purpose is rescue, rehab, and release? We were really doing some good things for her and for the overall education and community. I'm not seeing those things happen now. Um, now I see his Twitter handle is Winter's Agent. So I'm not quite sure what that is for a CEO to be Winter's agent, not RRR guy. This is one of the justification that they have. Obviously, that uh, call uh, for a lot of people to come and see this show. You know, the, there are places they say they are training the dolphins and uh, they are give them uh, a scope in their life by doing these things. And uh, they have the public watching, and the public is paying to watch the show. And uh, again, they can make uh, a lot of money out of this. Hollywood is inspiring and creates a beautiful fantasy, but unfortunately it is only a flight of the imagination. The reality is, for the past seven years, a vast majority of the time, Winter does not live the Hollywood dream, but instead lives in a boring concrete tank that was never intended for dolphins in captivity. It is really uh, a win-lose situation. They lose out and the aquarium wins. And this is really all about using these animals for revenue, for money. Uh, it has nothing to do with the welfare of these animals, period. Well, the average person doesn't see anything wrong with a few dolphins in captivity. There are millions of them out there. What's wrong with having a few of them performing for us here in this aquarium? What's wrong is it's abusive. What's wrong with abusing a few women? There's millions of them out there, right? It's the same kind of thinking. Our thinking is all wrong. It's abusive. Dolphin, uh, dolphins in captivity is abusive and it's unnecessary. It's there for money. It's all about international corporate greed. That's why they're in captivity. Once upon a time, it's my understanding, Clear, Clearwater was just a rescue rehab facility. They are now exploiting these animals. They are moving into an arena of pure display that is really unfortunate and it's not doing certainly winter, um, in my opinion, any good. But they should give her a different, oh gosh, just a different enclosure. That horrible, boring, monotonic, barren tank that she's in, that's her life 24-7, 365. It's not right. She is an intelligent animal, a feeling, thinking animal, and the situation for her is 
grim. Clearwater Marine Aquarium's public relations and marketing efforts contend they are a rescue rehab release facility. Regardless of any marketing or PR, the truth is early on they released five dolphins in nine years. But since going Hollywood with their huge success, they have had zero successful dolphin releases in seven years.